To crack cat, you need a lot of practice, and you can practice by taking Krakow's free mock. Just Google search Krakow free cat mock. Follow the link to get the free mock. We have put in a free mock with the latest pattern and with detailed solutions. Hi friends, welcome to Krakow's online classes. I'm Saili Kale. I'm one of the co-founders of Krakow and an alumna of IIM Ahmedabad. In today's class, we'll be doing revision of VARC. So we have covered the three basic topics that are often asked in CAT in uh, uh, in detail. So we have covered uh, RC approach to RC, how to solve specific questions on RCs, how to identify the central idea, primary purpose, everything we have deep dived into it. So we'll take a uh, uh, revise what steps we have to take uh, when it comes to RC again in this video. Secondly, we'll take a look at the approach to PJs and to para summaries. So uh, let's get started. So uh, the focus here would be uh, that you should have uh, a step by step list of things that you should do when you are tackling RC, PJs, OOCs and uh, para summary. So that's what we are trying to do. This is your list of things to do when you see an RC. So let's get started. So uh, we'll begin with RCs because they are the most important part of verbal. So the first thing that you should do is what, what should be your approach to RC. So the thing that we have said through many many of our videos on RC, the first thing that you do when you read through the RC is for each paragraph you are uh, reading, write down a one line main point of the paragraph. So once you have written down main point of one paragraph one paragraph two, at the end you will have like some four or five main points if there are like four or five paragraphs nowadays. The paragraphs generally uh, passages are smaller in uh, RCs that have come in the recent cat. So you will have some four or five main points. Your second step should be identifying the overall main point of the passage. It will basically be the point uh, uh, the author is trying to make throughout the passage. So essentially all of these sub main points will be related to the main point of the passage. It will be essentially supporting or furthering the main point of the passage. If you see that any sub main point is unrelated to the overall main point, then you have gotten the overall main point wrong. Uh, it will not happen that the author will uh, divert into something which is completely irrelevant uh, in the passage. Everything that the author puts in the passage would be there to drive a particular point forward. So your point, uh, this should be that you identify the main points, then you identify the overall main point or the central idea of the passage. Once you have identified the central idea of the passage, uh, identify its purpose and the tone of the passage. So what is the primary purpose of the passage? The primary purpose of the passage is to uh, drive home the main point of the passage. So if the point, main point of the passage is that something is good for you, then the uh, primary purpose of the passage is to convince the reader that something is good for you. Uh, if the primary uh, main point of the passage is to uh, describe something or uh, the is to uh, explain something in detail, then the primary purpose of the passage is to inform the reader. So essentially primary purpose of the passage is like the verb or the action that the author is trying to do to drive home the main point of the passage. If the uh, main point is a conclusion or a um, is essentially a uh, uh, thing that the author wants the reader to do uh, like vote in a certain way or anything of that sort then the purpose would be to convince the reader of the main point. Uh, it need not be always of this uh, format the author might be just narrating an incident they might just be uh, informing or explaining something, correcting a misconception. All of these are valid purposes. The main point would be uh, if you are like correcting a misconception, the main point would be yeah, this idea is actually wrong. This is how it should be. So that is uh, essentially the primary purpose is very closely related to the main point, but it is not the same as the main point. It's uh, the purpose of the passage would be to deliver the main point essentially. So uh, once you have identified this, uh, 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 main point of each paragraph, the main point of the overall pa passage, then you get to the, uh, we, uh, we find the main purpose and then lastly the tone of the passage. So the tone of the passage is firstly you have to identify whether the tone is objective or subjective. So here basically he is trying to, uh, you have to basically understand whether the author is seeing things in an uh, analyt analytical uh, a, a balanced manner whether he is seeing both pros and cons or is he like uh, pushing only one point of view 
at times the author will not actually uh, give two points uh, two sides of the coin they will give only one uh, one uh, case because that's what they are convinced about so in that case uh, in case only one side is presented then the uh, uh, then the uh, tone is subjective if both sides are presented if there's a balanced view then the tone is objective after that you have uh, irrespective of whether it's objective or subjective you can uh, split it up as positive negative and neutral so if it's objective and positive it means that the author has considered both sides and then he has uh, appreciated something saying that okay the schemes uh, put in by the government though there are some uh, though there are some areas where uh, the things could be improved overall this is a good scheme so it is appreciative it's a fair and balanced look which is appreciative of some topic uh, similarly it can be balanced and negative where you consider both sides and you say you know what this is not really working uh, it can be neutral where the author does not give his own opinion on the topic he just quotes people and leaves it open ended that often ha uh, that happens often when uh, the source of the uh, ed uh, uh, source of the passage is an editorial or something of the sort or just a plain news report uh, the author might not actually come out with his own views in that case the tone is neutral so when the tone is neutral the uh, any option where uh, you see that the author is trying to drive home this point or the author is trying to say this you can directly eliminate so all of these things are essentially uh, guides for you while answering uh, subjective questions that are asked in the question uh, subjective questions that are asked on the passage similarly when the subjective tone is there it's highly unlikely that uh, if the tone is subjective the uh, author can be neutral because once you have uh, chosen one side of the story it will either be uh, appreciative of that particular topic or negative it's not going to be neutral so always make sure that you are able to classify the tone in this way so once you identify what the tone is any of the options that do not fit in with the tone uh, any of the options that uh, misclassify the tone in terms of the title of the passage the attitude towards specific aspects that are mentioned in the passage attitude towards the topic of discussion all of these things you can eliminate any options that are negative when the passage is positive or vice versa so this is essentially the purpose of the passage the main idea of the passage the tone of the passage are markers for you to eliminate options that do not concur with them as such so given any rc you should essentially go through this pr uh, process of finding out these kind of uh, uh, subjective information about the passage it's important for you to understand what the author is saying and why he is saying so once you say that this is the main point this is the main point you have to identify why is the author saying this is he setting up the context for something is this the main point of the whole passage is he providing supporting arguments once you understand all this like uh, essentially extra information about the passage you'll be able to answer questions about the passage a lot better so now let's take a look at an example passage to put this into use consider the following rc that came in cat 2017 so uh, let's see take a look at the rc typewriters are the epitome of a technology that has been comprehensively rendered obsolete by the digital age the ink comes off the ribbon they weigh a ton and second thoughts are a disaster but they are also personal portable and above all private type a document and lock it away more or less the only way anyone else can get it is if you give it to them that is why the russians have decided to go back to typewriters in some government offices and why in the us some departments have never abandoned them Yes it is not just the resi uh, resistance to algorithms and secret surveillance that keeps typewriter production lines well one at least in business the last british one closed a year ago nor is it only the nostalgic appeal of the metal body and the close well defined keys the uh, stout uh, well defined keys that make them popular on ebay a typewriter demands something particular attentiveness by the time the paper is loaded the ribbon tightened the carriage returned the spacing and, ma and the margin set there's a big premium on hitting the right key that means that sorting out ideas pulling together a kind of order and organizing details before actually striking off there can be no thinking on screen with a typewriter nor are there any easy distractions no online shopping no urgent emails no twitter no need uh, even for electricity perfect for writing in a remote hideaway the thinking process is accompanied by the encouraging clacking of the keys and the ratchet of the carriage return ping so this is just given in one paragraph so there's like uh, uh, it's not easy to uh, have sub paragraphs when you have given this one paragraph 
But for the ease of uh, understanding the overall point of the passage, let's just, let's just divide this into parts. So here we'll uh, say this is the first part where the author is giving the introduction as such to the passage. Then he gives on uh, uh, one of the reasons why they are still uh, in production. And this is the larger uh, say. So I have split, uh, split it up into three parts for ease of uh, essentially summarizing. So essentially let's see what the first two lines are doing. They are saying that uh, te uh, typewriters have been replaced by uh, in the digital age because they are not easy to use. So essentially this is the context where, say, where which is saying that typewriters have mostly been replaced because they are not easy to use. But, and here is where the author starts with his main point, they offer something where that uh, uh, the uh, co computers cannot, they are private, which is why some uh, US and Russian departments continue to go to them. So this is the main point, essentially, they have some advantages, uh, here I, by they I mean typewriters. And the first advantage that the author talks about is that they are private. Any document you write on a typewriter is more private than one written on a computer. Uh, then he goes on to make a list of other uh, uh, advantages of typewriters. They require you to be attentive. They require you to actually think through the process before uh, starting to type. And uh, you are not distracted as you are in uh, while uh, using a computer. So essentially, if you see the uh, points that are the main points is the first main point is that typewriters have mostly been replaced. The second main point is, however, they continue to be used in some cases because they offer some advantages over the computer. Firstly being that it, uh, the documents made on it are private. Then the author says that uh, it requires attentiveness from the author. It also prevents distractions. So essentially in the remaining uh, two paragraphs, the author is essentially giving the advantages of using a typewriter over a computer. So this is what he's trying to say. So the overall main point you can say is that, that some people will continue uh, some pe uh, people prefer to use typewriters because they offer some advantages over computers. Some advantages such as they are private documents, uh, they, are, uh, they are a private form of documenting, uh, they require attentiveness of the author and they are uh, prevent distraction of the author while he is working at things. So this is what he is trying to say through the passage. So let's take a look at the uh, first question which came. So the question is which one of the following best describes what the passage is trying to do. So this is essentially asking you for the primary purpose of the passage. So let, now that we understood the main uh, point of the each part of the passage and the uh, main point overall, what would you say is the primary purpose of the passage? So the main point is that the author is saying that there, uh, though uh, typewriters have mostly been replaced, they offer some advantages over computers, which is why some people continue to use them. So the primary purpose of the passage would be to inform the user that this are, these are, the typewriter continues to be used for certain reasons where it is actually giving some benefits over computers. So basically it's like morally, mostly uh, uh, kind of describing uh, or informing the user rather than arguing for the user. Uh, arguing a case for the user. He's not trying to convince, he's just trying to inform in the uh, in the passage as such. So let's take a look at uh, what would you say would be the tone of the passage. The tone of the passage is uh, not objective because he's not uh, exactly, uh, he's uh, arguing for one particular point only. He's arguing that, uh, he's uh, putting forward one particular point only. It's a short paragraph. So he's basically saying that, look, there are some reasons why typewriters where typewriters can still be used. It's in general positive towards typewriters. So the tone is positive and slightly subjective. It's not a very objective tone as such. So let's take a look at what the primary purpose of the passage is. Uh, now that we identified the primary purpose, let's see the options. It describes why people continue to use typewriters even in the digital age. This is very close to what we discussed. Uh, it is describing why the typewriters continue to be used and it gives you a list of uh, reasons why it continues to be used e even in the, when computers are clearly easier to use. It argues that typewriters will continue to be used even though they are an obsolete technology. Now this is uh, essentially kind of differing in the tone of the passage. The passage is uh, not uh, arguing for something, it's not argumentative in nature, it's not persuasive passage. If you see the author never says that this is why it should continue or people should continue pr producing typewriters or uh, the sale of typewriters should never discontinue. He's not trying to persuade the reader. His tone is mostly uh, informing the reader. 
okay that this is already the case he is not building the case for something as such so this is inconsistent with the tone of the passage moreover uh, this is kind of a distortion where the author is uh, projecting uh, where the option is projecting the views of the author about uh, the author says something that what is currently happening the author does not say that this will continue to happen in the future that is actually not there in the passage so this is a addition that is uh, not consistent to what is uh, actually given in the passage this information that it will continue to be used is not given in the passage so we can eliminate option b let's take a look at option c it highlights the personal benefits of using typewriters the only though it highlights the benefits of using typewriters the adjective personal actually distorts the uh, option as such it's not necessarily personal benefits uh, in fact the first example that the author gives is of uh, typewriters used in us departments and russian departments those are professional benefits so clearly this is not a uh, this is a distorted option it's a trick because it does highlight the benefits of using typewriters but it is a uh, not for personal benefits so we can eliminate option c it shows that computers offer fewer options than typewriters now this is completely uh, this the author does not really compare computers with typewriters as like okay this is what computers offers versus this is what typewriters offer he gives only one side of the story that is the typewriters offers this over computers he does not discuss what computers actually offer over typewriters so we cannot conclude that computers offer fewer options uh, as compared to typewriters so option d is clearly wrong because it is uh, uh, not at all the uh, what is covered it is completely out of scope of what is actually covered in the passage as such so the right answer is option a so the point of this entire uh, uh, exercise was for you to actually go through whenever you read a passage go through this process of identifying the main points identifying the main point of the passage identifying the purpose of the passage and the tone of the passage this will help you a lot in eliminating wrong options as you could see just the fact that uh, the word argues was used made this particular option wrong because it is incorrect in tone it is incorrect in what uh, i understanding what the author is trying to do over uh, in the passage as such so always make sure that you go through this mental process of identifying the central idea identifying the purpose and identifying the tone of the passage so now that we have covered our list of tasks uh, list of uh, 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 the approach for uh, rc let's go on to para summary so in para summary your checklist should be uh, when you read the para summary try to identify what is the main point that the author is trying to say try to identify the purpose of the uh, uh, para summary is the author trying to convince you is he trying to inform you is he trying to uh, paint a like narrate an incident so what exactly would you say the author is trying to do through that particular paragraph thirdly identify the tone as we said with the passage there is negative tone a uh, positive tone neutral tone there is uh, objective tone subjective tone so you should be able to understand what is the tone of the passage at least uh, describe the passage as a positive tone negative tone or neutral tone that will help you eliminate options quite a bit because if anything is positive tone any option which shows a negative tone or uh, essentially take something that is positive about a vis a vis b and the option is that uh, b is negative that is actually a distortion because if the passage is about uh, uh, like com positively comparing a versus b the uh, uh, reason why they are doing is not to show down b but to appreciate a so any time where you see a positive tone being twisted into a negative tone you can eliminate an option based on it so uh, identify first the main point the purpose the tone and the degree of certainty so what do i mean by degree of certainty identify all those points where they say this should, should be the case or mostly leads to this or um, in uh, in majority of cases so whenever you see mostly majority of cases the degree of certainty is like more than half but less than one so in terms of probability it means it is a uh, likely to occur but not necessarily will occur so whenever you are when you have that kind of degree of certainty in the actual paragraph make sure that that degree of certainty is carried through in the option so wh whatever happens in the passage that should be accurately reflected in the option so if in the passage it is this is uh, likely to happen is changed to this will happen then that option is incorrect so it should uh, first thing you do is identify the main point identify what the author is trying to do this with the paragraph identify the tone 
and identify key areas of uh, degrees of certainties. They will help you eliminate uh, close options as such. Once you have identified all of that, just go to the options. First is remove anything that misses the main point. So anything that is too bogged down by like other irrelevant details as such, you can eliminate that. The, your main point should be there in the uh, option as such. Uh, sec thirdly, uh, remove anything that distorts the tone of the passage. If the tone of the uh, if the tone of the paragraph is positive, the tone of the option should also be positive. If the tone is negative, the tone of the option should also be negative. If the tone is neutral, the tone of the option should also be neutral. Lastly, it changes the degree of certainty. As I said, if uh, the author is not sure, just thinks this is likely to happen. If the option then goes on to say, okay, this will definitely happen. There's a change or a shift in degree of certainty and you should eliminate that option based on that. Uh, any other distortion that is introduced, uh, the very common distortions that are introduced are like uh, uh, fake uh, uh, like, or, uh, like causality pairs. Like if the author says key, uh, if the author says that this happened and this happened, uh, any option which says that uh, the, like the, if A happened and B happened, any option that says that B happened because of A happened, then you have to be very careful. Anything that introduces a causality in the option, you have to make sure that that causality is even present in the actual paragraph. There are many such distortions that are intentionally introduced in the options and you should be very careful with those kind of distortions. Anything that exaggerates the degree from like some to all, uh, if it's given that some students find it difficult, uh, if that is changed to all students find this topic difficult, there's a degree uh, change in number of uh, uh, people as such. So all of this is es essentially intentional distortion of information. So whenever you see anything which is like uh, uh, changes the degree of certainty, changes the tone, changes the uh, number of the uh, number of something, changes the uh, uh, introduces a uh, 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 a fake uh, cause effect relationship, anything of that sort, you can eliminate the option because of the distortion introduced. So these are the things that should go through your mind while reading a para summary. So let's uh, employ this via, with the help of an example. Consider the following para summary. The modern economy is so complex that people can no longer perceive the true forces that shape their lives. In this vacuum, the media portrays bad things as desirable and freedom as slavery. It's profitable to do so. After all, who wants to hear bad news all the time? People have become so mesmerized by the buzz of misinformation around them that they no longer know truth from falsehood. Anyone who has watched headline news will recognize this. There could be an asteroid headed right for us and Robin Mead would still be running stories about rescued kittens. So the author is basically saying that the modern economy is complex and we are uh, no longer able to discern uh, truth from falsehood. And uh, in addition to this, this is basically the context that uh, we are not able to uh, clearly see what is true, what is false. And the media on top of that is lying to us by giving us intentional misinformation because it is uh, profitable to misinform us. So that is the crux of the remaining part that the uh, media is misinforming us because it is prof profitable to misinform us, intentionally misinforming us. So these are the two parts of the this that the media is intentionally misinforming us because it is profitable to misinform us and because of the complexity of the economy we are not able to identify what is true what is false anymore. So a proper summary para summary should have both of these points. So let's consider the options one by one. In the age of this complex economy wrong information provided the, by the media doesn't help. Now here the uh, first option misses quite a few points. The first thing it misses is that the media is intentionally misinforming. This seems the wrong information provided could also be accidental wrong information. So it's kind of missing the very important point that the it is intentionally misinforming us. Secondly, it is also missing the point that it is profitable for them to misinform us. Therefore, option one misses too many of the crucial points of the para summary as such. So let's take a look at the second one. To maximize its profit, media portrays things in the wrong manner as a result of which people find it hard to recognize truth from the falsehood. So this is covering both the points that we discussed. So this is a potential yes. This is covering the fact that media is intentionally misinforming us because it is profitable to do so and the fact that we are not able to judge uh, the truth from falsehood because it's a complex, uh, the modern economy is a complex one. Now let's see, take a look at the third option. 
the buzz of misinformation created by the irresponsible media makes it tough to pursue that perceive the true forces that shape our lives so here it is missing the fact that it is doing so for profits it's also kind of distorting what is given in the passage uh, what we are uh, what uh, the buzz of misinformation is doing is that we are not able to understand what true uh, like we are not able to differentiate true from false essentially it's not uh, making it tough for us to perceive the true forces that shape our life uh, it's uh, the buzz of misinformation is essentially making us unclear about what is the truth what is false so this is firstly a distorted secondly it is missing the point of the fact that uh, there is intentional misinformation for profits let's take a look at the fourth point, uh, option the economy is so complex that media couldn't portray it in the correct manner resulting in confusion among the people now this is completely taking away the blame from the media the author is clearly blaming the media saying that they are doing this for profits and here it is acting uh, like the fourth option is stating it as if the media is a uh, in a hapless situation as such so it is clearly uh, incorrect this is uh, the author is very clearly negative towards the media and the fourth option is neutral towards the media so we can actually eliminate fourth option so the right answer is option 2 the tone towards the media is very negative the purpose of the uh, passage is to make uh, uh, convince the reader that the uh, media is intentionally misinforming it and the point is that the inten uh, media is intentionally misinforming you for profits so this is the main point of the passage the pur primary purpose of the passage the tone of the passage uh, the degree of certainty is that the author is does not express any kind of uh, uncertainty about it uh, he doesn't say maybe this is the reason why they are doing it he just says up front they are it is profitable to do so that's why they are doing it so he's fairly certain about what he's saying so all of these things are essentially guides for you to eliminate options where you feel that uh, this doesn't uh, go right with some part of what i have deduced from the pa uh, paragraph as such so now that you understood this part let's go on to para jumbles so let's uh, go through the process for para jumbles also so as we have discussed earlier with para jumbles uh, as with every question nowadays in verbal you have to identify the main point uh you if you don't read a paragraph and understand what is the main point it's very going to be very difficult for you to actually solve questions in uh, verbal so here because the uh, sentences are jumbled it's difficult to understand the main point of the passage but a uh, main point of the paragraph but in general once you read the sentences you can understand what is the topic of discussion and what the author is saying about it so even if you don't know what is the conclusion whether this conclusion is at the start or at the end you can understand what, whether what the author is trying to actually say through the paragraph so the first this is to identify what is the author trying to say what is the main point of the paragraph then you try to identify what is the uh, what is the role played by each sentence as such is this providing a context for the main point is this a supporting argument is this supporting something else uh, that is mentioned in the paragraph is this line supporting some other line as such so you have to identify the role played by each of the lines then try to construct the chain of thought so generally what we do in paragraphs is a uh, uh, pa para jumbles is we try to use tools directly out of the this directly go after uh, tools such as pronouns uh, what should be the opening sentence try to figure out uh, transition words but ideally this should be done after you understand what is the main point and what could be the chain of thought because the main point and chain of thought are far more uh, uh, they kind of provide you the foundation for you to work on if you don't understand the par paragraph it's very difficult for you to deduce uh, from the transition words what the author is trying to say as such secondly transition words can be tricky there can be more than one way a transition word can work so if you say however this is not the case that however can rebut more than one point now which point it rebuts you will understand only if you understand the overall point of the par par uh, paragraph as such if you understand the overall point of the paragraph what could possibly be the flow of such a paragraph once you have some kind of a skeleton in mind then you can put things properly in place with using these tools such as uh, pronouns or uh, transition words all of these things so first begin by identifying the main point and the chain of thought so by chain of thought what i mean is that uh, whenever uh, you have like a persuasive paragraph you'll have a context you will have main point and you will have details these two can be mixed up but what you won't have is you won't have details at the start 
so this is generally how somebody would go around making a point right you would start by saying okay this is what happened before this is what i what i i'm trying to say uh, this before you actually make your point you try to put it in some context saying that uh, uh, okay uh, women safety is not uh, uh, women safety should be taken more seriously you would put it in the context that there are there have been there has been an increase in crimes against women in the recent uh, few months so you give the context you make your point and then you would give supporting arguments that's a logical way for you to construct a paragraph uh whenever you are given a paragraph there are only limited logical ways in which you can actually construct a paragraph while making a coherent point as such so always trying to think of it in terms of what would be a rough skeleton of the uh paragraph given the fact that okay this is this line seems to be a context line this line seems to be the main point of the paragraph these lines seem to be uh, supporting arguments or details so based on this information you can kind of figure where they should be now your uh, exact ordering might be different but if you have a idea about where a uh, particular line should be whether they should be at the start of the paragraph at the end of the paragraph then you can greatly reduce the number of uh, uh, op, like the uh, number of uh, like permutations that are possible and then you can check using other tools that are there such as uh, uh, you can then uh, uh, identify what is the topic of discussion so any line that introduces the topic of discussion would be the opening sentence then you can identify okay if this is the opening sentence what flows best with from it so you can then go on and construct it based on the skeleton that you've already made uh, go through the classroom on para jumbles and go, go through our videos on uh, uh, using uh, transition words they are extremely useful tools while solving para jumbles and there's a lot of detail that you need to uh, remember while using transition words what is a positive transition word what's like a supporting transition word what's a conclusive transition word all of these things will help you understand okay this is what is happening in the paragraph as such then there are other tools that you can use such as like enumeration timeline pronouns so go through those videos you these are essentially tools for you to use so once you have this chain of thought you can then uh, uh, like employ your tools to like uh, fine tune the actual ordering of sentences so if you have like uh, or uh, if you have that okay this should be in the first half of the paragraph this should be in the second half of the paragraph then you can go on to the tools and place them properly in place as such so now that you have understood this let's take a look at an example consider the foreign para jumble the eclipse of the fame of romney is no doubt partly due to the fact that he never exhibited at the royal academy strange it is that until the middle of the 19th century we when the romney revival began his fame had suffered an almost total eclipse There were no weekly art columns in newspapers to fan the embers of his fame. His portraits were hidden in private collections. The National Gallery said had not been acquired and nobody cared about his heroic and historical cartoons and studies at Cambridge and elsewhere. When Romney retired from contact with the fashionable world, he passed out of the public life. So, let's see what is the main point of the passage. The main point that, uh, that the paragraph is trying to say is that uh, Romney uh, because he was not uh, uh in regular contact with public life he kind of passed out of public life and uh, uh he was not essentially famous as such uh, his fame had suffered a total eclipse so what uh, what line of this uh, introduces the topic of discussion the topic of discussion is not the painter romney in fact it is the fact that his fame had uh, uh, suffered a total eclipse then the author goes on to exp explain why this happened so this line that actually uh, broaches this topic of discussion would be the one which is essentially providing the main point as such so if you see this would be the main point that uh, when the romney revival began his fame had suffered a main total uh, uh, eclipse now he supports this argument that his fame had su suffered a total eclipse from the fact that uh, nobody was really nobody cared about him as such so together this is the main point this is the supporting argument let's see what the remaining do uh, the eclipse is no doubt partly due to the fact now this is giving reasons why it has actually suffered a total eclipse his fame has suffered a total eclipse the eclipse of the fame now it's like giving a exam a reason for this so it should come after this uh this this one 5 and 3 together give an uh, reason why his fame essentially eclipsed one of the reason is that he didn't exhibit at the royal academy the other reason is that there were no weekly art columns for him and the third reason is that uh, he uh, retired from the fashionable world he passed out of public life so essentially 1 5 1 3 and 5 are giving reasons why his 
uh, fame eclipsed. So they are supporting arguments as such. They are details of why he kind of uh, went away from public memory. So essentially any supporting details should be at the end of the paragraph. The main point context should be at the start of the paragraph. So here the main point is 2. So 2 and 5 or uh, 2 and 4 which make the main point of the paragraph and give like the first supporting argument uh, that uh, which describe that his fame was over should be at the start of the paragraph. Now we have 1, 3 and 5 at the end of the paragraph. Now let's try to figure out how you should actually uh, uh, organize this. Now you have 1, 3 and 5. Uh, you have, uh, if you see uh, the 1 starts by trying to explain what happened. So one is actually a uh, bridge between the fact that his fame, ha uh, there was a total eclipse of fame and uh, 3 and 5 which explain why that happened. So one acts as a bridge between these two points. So one should come here. Now you have 5, 3 or 3, 5. Now between these two, let's try to see what makes more sense. Uh, if you see 3, 3 is actually describing what uh, 5 is saying. 3 say, uh, 5 says that he passed out of public life and 3 is describing what it actually means. What does it mean to pass out of public life? What it means to pass out of public life means that you were no longer being talked about uh, in the way you are no longer being discussed in weekly art columns as such. So 3 is essentially supporting 5 in a way. It's adding uh, content to the point being made in 5. So 5, 3 makes a lot more sense than 3, 5. Therefore, the right uh, order of words should be 2, 4, 1, 5, 3. As you could see, there were no transition words for us to go by. Still, we could answer this question just on the basis of uh, flow of thought as such. So now that you know how to use these uh, tools, let's also take a look at OOCs. Uh, OOCs use the same tools. In addition to that, you have to remember some additional points. The fun one thing that you have to remember is that how to spot the odd one out. Uh, you still have to form the paragraph as you would usually form the paragraph in PJs. But to spot the odd one out, you have to figure out any sentence which has a pronoun that is not connected to any of the nouns mentioned before. Any sentence that goes off topic or is tangential to the remaining uh, part. So essentially, whatever is the main point of the paragraph, if that is not supported by a particular line, that line is out of context. So those are the two things that you should look for when it comes to uh, uh, spotting the odd one out. Also look for if there is a timeline, also look for anything that does not fit in the timeline of events that are described in the remaining sentences. If there is enumeration, if anything, uh, if there is enumeration, you will basically find pairs. And once pairs are formed, any sentence that is not part of a pair would be the odd one out. So these are all the tools that are there in addition to PJ uh, tools that you can use to understand what is the odd one out in OOCs. So let's take a look at a OOC question. In the, the northern shore turns and twists around the four uh, peninsulas. Beyond Greece is Asia Minor, the part of Asia which lies between the Mediterranean Sea and the Black Sea. In ancient, in ancient times, the most important peoples lived along the shores of the Mediterranean. Fourth, uh, the most heroic deeds of the Greeks took place in a, a great war between the Greek cities and the kingdom of Persia about 500 years before Christ. Five, the first is Spain which separates the Mediterranean Sea from the Atlantic Ocean. The second, shaped like a boot, is Italy and the third, the end of which looks like a mulberry leaf, is Greece. Now, this is a very interesting sentence here, which is sentence 5, which is the biggest hint that you can get because it has enumeration. Enumeration is like my favorite tool because it makes everything very simple. If you have enumeration, then you can easily understand, uh, uh, you can understand what the preceding sentence should be and the succeeding sentence should be. So, here it is, it is describing three things. Now, where you have to find some place where... Uh, it's kind of introducing three things or more. So you see that line in uh, sentence one, the northern shore turns and twists around four peninsulas and three of them are mentioned in five. Now we have to find another line which mentions a possible fourth peninsula, uh, which is in sentence two. So if you see one, five and two together describe four peninsulas. One uh, introduces the topic of four peninsulas, five enumerates three of these four peninsulas and uh, two gives you the fourth peninsula as such, which is the uh, beyond Greece is Asia Minor. So Asia Minor is the fourth peninsula. So one, five, two is clearly linked together. So we can eliminate all of these uh, lines as out of context. So bet it's between three and four. Now in between three and four, uh, the fact is that one, five, two together describe the four peninsulas of the uh, northern shore of uh, 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 the Mediterranean. So as such, if any uh, 
uh, anything that uh, does not uh, describe the Mediterranean, Mediterranean shore would be uh, irrelevant to the remaining part of the paragraph. So between 3 and 4, 3 talks about the shores of the Mediterranean. So 3 is obviously in line with the rest of the paragraph. So 3 would be uh, a better uh, introductory sentence about what is being described in 152 than 4. 4 is talking about heroic deeds which is completely unrelated to the geography being described in 1, 5 and 2. 3 is introducing uh, people and in turn uh, shores of Mediterranean which is like geography of Mediterranean. So that would be a good context builder for 1, 5, 2 which is describing the geography of the Mediterranean, the four peninsulas of the northern shore of Mediterranean. So this is like uh, from ba using those basic concepts we could identify that 4 is the odd one out. So basically what we want to do is that once you see the PJ, think of what could be the, what is the main point of the paragraph, what is the role being played by each sentence, identify the chain of thought, have like a rough skeleton in your mind. Once you have the rough skeleton in your mind, take out the tools from your toolkit which is like enumeration, pronouns, uh, timelines, uh, there are so many things that you could do, transition words being a huge part of it. So all of these have been uh, covered in detail in individual classrooms. Here you just need to remember how you should actually go about it. You should have this uh, clear technique in mind that this is where I start, this is what I do next, this is what I do next. Once you do these uh, things enough number of times then you can do this automatically without explicitly thinking about what is the main point of the paragraph, what is the main point of the passage. If you have enough practice of using this technique then it becomes second nature to you. So this is how you should actually go about solving questions in the ARC. Uh, I would urge you to please uh, check out, uh, answer the questions that are given in the classroom ses uh, session. Uh, those are very good practice uh, questions. Please also see all the related videos that are given in the uh, description box. Please make sure that you are putting in enough uh, uh, time for practicing questions now. Uh, with uh, less than 30 days left for CAT, it's very, very important for you to start practicing. Uh, your uh, The time for uh, revision and practice has begun. So make sure that you put in a lot of effort in actually not just learning but actually practicing what you are learning. So thank you for tuning in.